The Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezonings and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request, unless the time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. Welcome to the December zoning meeting of Brevard County Commission, and uh, we are going to pause here for a moment and have a moment of silence. Thank you, Commissioner Znardi. Please stand and leave me. Uh, I'm going to lead you on the play. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess I should have called this meeting to order, right? <laughs> Okay, we are going to go ahead and move into resolutions. Commissioner Smith, I believe you have one tonight for us, sir. Is anyone here from Vieira High School Alumni Hall of Fame? No, so there's no point in my reading this, but we, we are going to um, recognize them for their inaugural Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony on Saturday, December 16th. Moving right along. Okay, thank you, sir. We are moving into consent agenda. We only have two items, and does any commissioner want to pull them, or I'll entertain a motion to approve them? I move that we uh, approve the consent agenda. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Madam, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tobaya. Uh, Thank you. I don't want to pull it, but I do want to comment on 2A2, and I certainly want to thank uh, Commissioner Barfield for speaking up on this item on October 10th and advising that we back off uh, because of the support and attention to detail. We now have a proposal that is uh, a fair way to determine the cost share eligibility through the county, and I think we all can agree that not only does this version provoke promote fairness, but it is more a common sense approach to calculating the costs. So I wanted to thank not only Commissioner Barfield, but staff for coming up with a much more equitable proposal. And I'd have to agree with you, sir. I, I think that was a good move you all made that night. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Isnardi. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? It passes 5-0. And moving into public comments, I have one card from Mr. Charles Tovey. Charles Tovey, 2555 Roberts Road, Melbourne, Florida, 32940. Um, I have a list of things. Start off with, have your Thanksgiving card, but I didn't know when the gift to people were starting for the clock because of the $25 limit and things, so I didn't 
when I step into, anyways, you have a Thanksgiving card, the wish was there. Um, this is a survey or some kind of notice from the people that get paid money for people that live in houses and they get taxpayer money for every, so I had to commit fraud because they asked me if I lived there and how many people lived there and it took me a while just to get because of my mailbox situation and receiving my mail and I never did figure out why they destroyed my mailbox three years, three and a half years ago anyways. But I told them I lived there and I hope I didn't entrap myself but I was caught in between a situation. Why am I up here? Well, appointments are hard to come by. The time value is practically worse, worth my drive, unworth my drive to make the appointment and all the other things. Plus, I hate to leave my property, but on the other hand, um, I can't address the commission as a whole. And even though it's been changing throughout the years, and we still have two years left of this commission, I'm hoping. And I don't know who's running for election yet, but I'm going to look into that next why I come to these meetings. Uh, where else am I going to go? Can't go to Palm Shores. Outlawed me from the city and everybody I know had to live at the end of my road. And then they shoot guns off and the police come and they, they want to look at me. And I'm standing there in the rain in a towel with my Bible. Um, whoa. Let's say I meet all these requirements. Let's just say we come to terms on everything. Then what am I allowed to do? Or what am I not allowed to do? And who am I going to go through? Palm Shores? I, I have no city water out there. And they ripped out my water line. And you know the, some of the other story. Anyways, what am I allowed to do? The importance of my property. I thought the nice Spanish style, like the office at the end of Washington Post Road, Burton Townhomes. I thought it would look nice until I recognized the environmental value. There are springs there, especially on my property. I have a seven to ten foot deep artesian free flowing well. Used to be till they dried it up. Haven't been out there because I get so upset and I have to control myself. Out of time, looking for suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're moving into public hearings. Item A and B were tabled, so we're going to move into item C. Madam Chair, I'm, can I interject? I most, was just, most certainly. I was just in, advised that even though there was no one here to receive the uh, resolution, that I have to put it into the record and make a motion to approve it and get a second. So can I, can I do that now? You certainly can, sir. Let me just read it. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Brevard County Board of County Commissioners does hereby congratulate the 2017 Vieira High School Hall of Fame inductees and commend them for the outstanding example, examples they have set for the student athletes of today. Done, ordered, and adopted in regular session the 7th day of December 2017. I'd like to make a motion to receive this resolution. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5-0. We don't need to do anything else now, correct? No, we're good. Okay, let's go into item C. County manager, is this you? Oh, I think it's Aaron. Yeah, actually, Chairman, if we can go back to items A and B, uh, those were uh, the recommendation of LPA was oh. to table those yeah, items, and if the that. board chooses <clears throat> to take their consideration to table, we'd, we'd ask you to make a motion on it. So hard items. to get a good chair these days, huh? <laughs> Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to table 4A and 4B to the 2 1 of 18 meeting. Okay, I have a motion to table. Do I have a second? Second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0 to table items A and B. Now let's try item C. Okay, item 4C is a request for a change of zoning classification from RRMH1 and GU to AGR, Agricultural Residential, on uh, 5.91 acres uh, located on the south side of Canaveral Groves Boulevard in the Sharps area. Um, this request um, is for the applicant to do a tree farm in the future, um, and I believe he may be here today to speak on it. Yes, Mr. Um, Larry Harrell, did you want to come up and...
Uh, yes, Larry Harrell. I live at 899 Canaveral Groves Boulevard. And I just feel that this is a better use for the property than what it is now. I'd be, be able to get some use out of it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank I you. believe it's a good fit. Do I have a motion? Could we confirm that you have no cards on this item besides Mr. Harrell's? It's the only one, ma'am. Okay. So moved. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Barfield. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Item D. Item D is a request for a change of zoning classification from, from BU1 to BU2. Uh, the property is located at 3810 US Highway 1 in the MEMS area. PNZ made a recommendation to approve a binding development plan limiting the uses to all of the uses in BU1 with the addition of the BU2 use for the manufacturing and outdoor storage of concrete um, yard ornaments and accessories. Thank you, and I have one card on this also, Mr. Don Clark. Yeah. Hello. Can you state your name and the address for the record, sir. Uh, Don Clark, uh, 3810 U.S. Highway 1, MEMS, Florida. Are you wanting to just answer questions or? I don't know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm wanting to get it changed from BU1 to BU2 so I can make it sell my cement statues there. Yes, sir. I've, through the years, driven by there many times. So um, I, I think it's a good fit, and you're um, having this approved with the binding development plan. So I, I think it's appropriate. Do I have any comments or a motion from the commission? I'll make a motion to approve this. I have a motion rezoning. by Commissioner Smith. Do I have. Uh, you want the binding development plan? Yes, with the binding development plan. Manufacturing Is that part of your motion, Commissioner Smith? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Isnardi. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Okay, item E. Item E was withdrawn by the applicant, so I think we'll move on to item F. Uh, Just thought I'd make sure they were in. Sure. Okay. Um, item F is a request for a conditional use permit for a guest house at a property located at 5805 Eagle Way in Merritt Island. Uh, the North Merritt Island Board's recommendation was for approval. All right, we have two cards on this, Commissioner. Um, Smith is, um, this is Mr. Barfield, I'm sorry. Would you like them to come up first or would you like to comment, sir? Is this for questions or? I have Joan Sinatra and um, Robert Van Ardslin, which is the applicant. Thank you. It's rare. Commissioner Barfield. I, mean, I don't have any problems with this. Um, North Merritt Island D uh, District approved it and I'm fine with it. Uh, is uh, does anybody wants to comment first or okay in that case I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the CUP uh, as stated I have a motion do I have a second second by Commissioner Tobias all in favor of vote aye aye, aye. opposed passes 5-0 thank you congratulations items G yeah, item G is a request for a rem removal of the binding development plan and conditional use permit, which require an eight-foot masonry wall um, on uh, a property located at 1740 West King Street in Cocoa. We have some recent uh, development uh, that the applicant provided us just before the meeting. Um, staff most recently visited the site on Monday. Code enforcement went out, and the uses were still active on the property, but we just got some materials from the applicant um, that show that the use has uh, ceased. He's going to, I think, show those on the um, I guess the screen behind you and in front of you today, but it's our understanding in conversations with the applicant that he's requesting that staff make another visit to the site to confirm that the use has ceased. Um, so if you choose to do that, we this, that may affect your motion today. So I, I'm thinking we, we need to allow him to do this because once we table it, everything's shut down. So I, I'm thinking that would be the appropriate move. Pictures are uh, dated today. This is the uh, back of the property. Um, 
which is the used to be the field full of used cars, but nothing's there now. Can I just change this myself? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another picture of the uh, road that's actually leading from the uh, uh, building back to the back uh, again, which has been cleaned out. This would be the front of the building from, um, looking from 520, uh, which is the uh, hmm, south side of the building. <laughs> I had to think about it. This is another picture of the uh, front of the building uh, with nothing there but probably some dirt and chain link fence. This is a little blurry. It's inside the warehouse, which is probably 90% cleaned out of stuff. Might be a few things left. This is a picture of the, well, what did I do? Okay, the front to the right of the building, uh, which you look back, there's like a little carport area back in there. Uh, and the last picture is on the west side of the building, which is an open field that was used for car storage, etc. So um, those are the pictures that were presented today. Um, our brother-in-law took the pictures, brought them in. You guys have a copy. I understand that uh, an officer has to go out and verify what we're showing you is is there, and um, if that's the case, then we come back, and then the uh, violation is, if we're clean, the violation goes away. Is that correct? Well, uh, the violation doesn't go away because the violation with code enforcement is that you don't have the eight-foot wall, but if the use ceases to exist, uh -huh. and we can confirm that, then it would be appropriate to remove the CUP and the BDP because the junkyard use is no longer there. And then that you would just be limited to the other uses within your zoning, the other permitted uses. Okay, would the zoning still stay IU1? Mm-hmm. It would? Yes, sir. You just couldn't put a junkyard on it without a wall? Right. And that would have to be presented again for that to happen. Exactly. But the zoning would stay the same. And the, yeah, uh, the junkyard use was was a conditional use, and that conditional use, one of the conditions of it was the wall. Yeah, right. Um, and so that's where the code enforcement uh, complaint started. Right. Um, so if the junkyard use is gone, then you're no longer required to have the wall, and okay. you have all the uses available to you. Once you are mind. satisfied, then we're done, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no more meetings? Right. So what do we do now? Well, I, I think it might be appropriate if we table it to allow staff to go out and verify, and then it'll come back again the next zoning meeting. And yeah, the next jo uh, zoning meeting is February 1st, 2018. So if you do table it, table it to that date certain. Okay, just for information, I didn't state my name. Could I do that for the record? Please, sir. <laughs> I'm Harvey Baker at 925 Westwood Drive, Merritt Island. Thank you for remembering this. <laughs> I messed it up the first time. I did good on the second time, and I just thought about it. Thank you. Do I have a motion to table? So I move. To February 1st? February 1st, 2018. Okay, I have a motion on the board. Do I have a second? second. Motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Barfield. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Thank you, sir. We'll see you in a couple months. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Item H. Okay. I'm going to read into the record items H and I because they're companion applications. That way you guys can talk about the, the comp plan amendment and the rezoning at the same time and then make separate uh, actions. So the first item, item H, is a request for a small-scale comp plan amendment going from residential 15 to community commercial um, on a property that's 0.71 acres in size located at the southwest corner of River Park Boulevard off of US-1 in Titusville. Um, the uh, PNZ recommendation was for approval. Um, and then item I is a request for a change of zoning classification uh, from BU-1, BU-2, and RU-111 to all BU-2 on uh, the same property in Titusville. Um, PNZ made a recommendation to approve the RU-1 portion of the rezoning request um, 
to be one and took no action on the remaining request. Thank you. I do have one card on this. Kathy Pulver. It's Kathy Pulver, 149 River oh. Park Boulevard in oh. Titusville. And I'm not sure how to turn this on. Thank you. Um, I just have a thank you. I have a, um, a brief statement from the um, neighbors at River Park Boulevard. Um, but before I read that, I'd like to share a couple of additional photographs just to kind of bolster what it is that you know we're saying in our statement. And the first one is um, a picture that was is a picture that was taken after the planning and uh, zoning committee meeting, but before the initial. Um, commissioner's meeting. And this shows an 18-wheel, obviously, tractor trailer unloading the fencing supplies onto the front yard of one of our neighbors. This is not um, secure fence and real property. It's a, it's a private residence. Um, that was taken, as I said, uh, probably two weeks after the initial meeting, the planning and zoning. Um, I have a couple of pictures that were taken last night. Um, that's after the spoke of the binding plan agreement. And this first one shows shows yet another tractor trailer, which is blocking the road. And this was about um, about quarter to five in the evening. Um, that was unloading materials. And then, <clears throat> pardon me. And then proceeded to have a forklift come out to unload those materials. So. Um, basically blocked the entire road for a period of about 30 minutes and this is part of the issues that we're talking about in our statement here. Um, I'll just leave that there. Hopefully I can get through this. I'm not a very good public speaker but <coughs> thank you. It says, um, the notification of the request for change of zoning went to only those properties within 500 feet of secure fence and rail, and that excluded more than half of the residents on a dead-end street. Um, even so, petitions have been signed and submitted to the board indicating that 12 of the 18 properties are not in favor of rezoning this lot to facilitate more commercial activity at the gateway of our neighborhood. The property at 189 River Park Boulevard wasn't included because it's owned by um, Mr. Flickinger. So, uh, he's a member of this. And it's also occupied by a manager of Secure Fence and Rail at this time. Um, several some, uh, photos were submitted at the planning and zoning meeting that showed poor stewardship of this property in question. The neg this negatively impacts residents and owners by reducing the neighborhood aesthetics in general, restricting access to our homes through employee traffic and parking, used by commercial secure and fence rail, secure fence and rail vehicles, tractor trailers parked for deliveries, I'm sorry, and ongoing trash and debris, which they have cleaned up. Um, the additional um, photos there that I showed you, I'm going to rush through this because I see I'm getting out of time. Um, they'd also like to address the um, odors and noises from the construction. Um, the strong odor of paint, loud song and hammering can go on for hours. Um, we understand that we can't insist that secure fence and rail not operate on Sundays, and this means that we'll experience the noise and inconvenience seven days a week. Um, we'd like to see a sign at the end of that property that indicates no commercial traffic past that point. Um, <clears throat> I've driven a mile, about a mile both north and south of um, secure fence and rail, um, and there are no other um, open manufacturing or commercial businesses um, that abut a residential neighborhood like ours. And so it's unique in that respect. And we do end in a cute little park at the end of the road. So those are some of the things that we would like for you to consider um, when you make your decision on this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I, I believe the um, applicant might have placed the wrong letter on the card, and um, we're checking that out. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
I have um, sorry, Steve Mongan and Julian Manquin. Most, though, I must say. Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, good evening, Commissioner. My name is Julian Mangum, M-A-N-G-U-M, Man and Gum. <laughs> and I live at 7350 North Highway 1, Unit 102 in Cocoa, Florida. And I am one of the three property owners of the 1740 West King Street property that went before you earlier, which you'd already voted on, which I was hoping to speak to that prior to that. But uh, things didn't work out quite that way. Um, I was going to stand here and rebuttal to a lot of the things that have been said before regarding uh, the removal of the uh, equipment and uh, parts and cars and that sort of thing from the 1740 West King Street property. It had actually been an ongoing process for quite some time. And uh, a 50-year-old business with over 200 automobiles on it. Is that the one we just did, sir? What's what? Is that the one we just tabled? Yeah, that you tabled. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you might want to come back next time. There's still be another opportunity to speak to it. Well, my my question, my goal here was to be able to rent this property as soon as we can because it's sitting there empty. It's not generating any income, but there are expenses involved, property taxes, all of that sort of thing. But without some sort of clarification, it's exactly what the zoning is. And without having this issue resolved, all these pictures, and I can show you where the Department of Revenue has been notified that the sales tax exempt number has been canceled. I can show you where the water and electric is on and the property owner's names, not the business name. I can show you where all of these things have been done to comply with this uh, conditional use permit being removed and the binding development plan yes, being Yes, sir. I, I tell you what, if you get with um, county staff later, we'll, we'll figure out all those things for you. Okay. But um, we're on the next item right now, and I don't think there's a correlation between the two of them, correct? You're with the fence? Pardon me? You don't think there's a correlation between... The junkyard. Oh. 4G. Gotcha. So they did it's, write It was a salvage yard that you were discussing earlier. That, yes. And now it's tabled and gone into February again. So now it's December, then it was August. It's been going on for so long. I thought we could resolve this issue well, tonight. Well, we had to have proof that the items were off of the property. Yeah. So staff is going to have to go out and, and, and make sure that that process happened. Well, I would, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll put all the cards back. <laughs> no, um... Uh, the uh, I'd like to be notified of when that's going to happen. So far, I've been kind of left out in the cold on this whole situation, and uh, I see I probably should have spoke up much earlier. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, um, uh, we need to move forward with this if we can. Is there not going to be a January meeting? Is that no January meeting? No. no. You guys taking a month off? <laughs> Which you probably deserve. But uh, Ken, is there not going to be a January meeting? There's no, not a January. No, sir. That's the first. Uh, that's the first um, zoning meeting is February first. But just to 1st. clarify, you have all of the rights available to you in the IU one zoning. So you are welcome to use a different use on your property and, and get a new tenant in the interim. The only thing that is in play here is the code enforcement action for the wall, which is on hold pending the decision on February 1st. Okay. So there's there's no compliance issues that you have, and there should be nothing under your current zoning that's holding you up from getting a new tenant. So we could rent this to whatever business that is lawfully allowed to operate under an IU-1 Absolutely. Zoning. Yes. For and that's not going to in any way interfere with removing this conditional use permit for salvage yard buying development plan and satisfying the code violations. Absolutely. Provided there's no salvage yard going yeah. on there. The only thing is, is that you are currently, by your BDP, required to still have a masonry wall, but the code enforcement action is on hold for yeah. that. And right. if that is to be removed once we confirm okay. the use is Well, gone, that issue's been resolved. There is no business going on there at all. Exactly. So there once is none. No salvage yard. There's no cars there being dismantled. There are no parts inside the warehouse. There are no co commercial equipment anywhere relating to salvage operation on the property as the picture taken today clearly show. And so I don't see where that would be a, a problem. Yeah. So we can continue on and mm -hmm. I can find a renter, get some income, Absolutely. get the property. So yeah, that, none of this should great. hold that up. That was my biggest concern, actually. Thank you very much. I appreciate you folks' attention. Thank you. Mr. Magnum, did you want to? I basically have well, as was said here on this one, I'm Stephen Bangham. I was Bangham's Auto Parts. And I, we've been left out of the loop when we 
and our family members, we picked Harvey to speak for us, didn't have any idea that it was going to be dragged on like this for this long period of time. But like Sid said, I'm in compliance with everything, and I thank you for what you all done to, to, you know, the, the wall coming off. This is a rather unique situation, Commissioners. But Mr. Mang and my brother Stephen is a property owner. It's all gone. also a, it's a primary, is a majority shareholder in the now defunct company called Mangum Juice Cars and Parts. My sister Sandra Baker, Mr. Baker's wife, right, uh, is a minority shareholder in the company, but she's also a property owner. Mr. So, Baker is not a property owner. His name is not on the deeds of the property, just yeah. myself. It's gone. Yes. But the business is gone. That's yeah, well, I'm really hoping we get out there and everything's ready okay. and, and yes. you guys are ready to like do good to, business. I'll and give you my contact information. Thank you, you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Um, sorry about missing you gentlemen. We're back into the... <coughs> The other item we were in, and I didn't get a card from the applicant on this. So what do we do from here? Um, is the applicant here today? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. If you want to go ahead and present the request. Hello, um, I'm Kathy Skidmore Arsenal, the sister Janie uh, Skidmore Jane Panassas. Um, we have uh, submitted a draft binding de development plan for the property uh, that's been reviewed, and um, we'd like to ask for you to approve it. Um, we do understand there's one item that doesn't meet your ordinances where the fencing was, uh, was we had said we'd put an eight foot fence. But only a four-foot fence, I think, is is allowed by the ordinances. So, we would adjust it for that. Um, we also do want to speak to um, the resident on River Park Boulevard about the photo of the delivery truck. Um, and our tenant, Secure Fence, has seen the picture and said that that was not a delivery truck for for the Secure Fence business. That was a residential delivery truck with a forklift. Yeah, la last night. My wife and I actually videoed that semi going down. It delivered to the third house on the right. It was delivered delivering brick pavers. We videoed it because more and most likely we knew she was going to come up here and try to bring it in and let y'all know that, you know, trying to use that as us blocking the driveway. But we don't. We have plenty of room for our vehicles. The semi that came in before, um, that was our concrete company, they actually didn't get the delivery out that night, so they parked and they were in, they were parked there like through the night, I guess they got there without us knowing about it. And we've since resolved that and they know not to come through the night. Cause you know how semi drivers, when they hit their time, they'll just stop and sleep in their truck or whatever. And they parked in the residential cause they didn't know any other area to park around there. So we've made it clear not to bring any deliveries after 5 or 6 o'clock to where we couldn't open the gates and get them delivered and get them out. So that's why that vehicle was parked on the left-hand side. But I actually have videos of the truck that was unloading the pavers, the brick pavers yesterday. And that was, uh, it's either the second or third house on the right, on the south side of River Park, that they are delivering the pavers to. And I got video of it. Thank so you. What are the hours of your business? We run, uh, the office is open 8 to 5. Our doors, or the yard opens from 6 and usually runs till about 6. During the winter, it's about 6. Summertime, depending on how busy we are, the guys will come in around, you know, anywhere from 5 to 7. But that's coming in, parking the vehicles, and then leaving out. Um, as far as hammering and stuff all day, we don't, all we do is load up materials in the yard and ship them out. So we build everything at customers' houses and commercial, so on and so forth. But as far as building stuff there, we don't really build anything there. We'll load stuff up with forklifts, stuff like that. We do have a router that will cut some holes out of some vinyl so we can you know, put the application together out for customers, but we don't actually like physically build stuff there in the yard. So the hammering and stuff going on, that's really not. I got cameras. I got 48 cameras on my shop. I got a three-month loop. That records my every second of every day, every vehicle. I got a GPS, so I can give you a full detailed last three month events of what my company did on a day to day basis if you would like those. 
Ms. Aaron, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? I know the, the fence was something that you had talked about earlier. Yeah, the language, the way that it reads now is that they're uh, requesting to memorialize a commitment to do an eight foot fence on the east side of the property and just that's in conflict with the code, just the 25 foot setback from the road, it needs to be a four foot fence um, and then it can be eight foot beyond that. It could even go up to 12 if that was what you were requesting, but um, so we need to just tweak that language. Uh, is that 25 foot from the road? Uh, 25 foot from the property line. Okay. Um, uh, that yeah, I'd like to have somebody come out there and actually assess that because if we put a four foot fence, I got probably half a million dollars worth of inventory and tools and equipment in my yard, and having a four foot fence, anybody you know, any hood rat can jump over the fence and steal my stuff. So, and there's always been a six foot chain link fence around that whole property. Is this because of code? Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's also, I mean, I used to live in a house that's behind that Flick and Jerome's, and my operations manager lives in there now. And as far as access and line of sight, I know I deal with it every day with fences and permits and all that, but line of sight and everything is the fence is well within. Um, so I'd like to actually review that. One, so the neighbors, and I understand, you know, I, I live in Wendover and Titusville, and of course, you don't want privacy. And so, and I completely respect, and, and tr we're trying to do everything we can. We prettied up the yard, you know. Within means, we're trying to make everything, but it's a business, but, you know, it's commercial property. We're running the business, you know, trying to help the community out, especially with the storm just happening. But I would recommend allowing the eight-foot fence on that sign, and we've already ordered a new gate and a gate operator, so when my guys come in, they can open the gate and shut it back, so when they drive by, they don't have to see in the yard. So we're willing to do those things to help them out, visit visual-wise, so um, they feel, you know, a little bit better driving down their community and don't see, you know, stuff in the yard so if we could do an eight foot fence down that side I'd actually prefer that how, how do we do that so I'm guessing this Why wasn't permanent <laughs> yeah the only mechanism to do that is to request a variance to the fence height and you may have some some luck with that if the adjacent property owner is the same owner but we need to just think about the process um, because the BDP has to come back before the board right. um, even if it were to be approved today right. and where the variance fits into that process is um, we have to think about that timing so um, I don't know if uh, what date certain it could be tabled to to allow the variance process to be in place and allow you to bring that re request before the Board of Adjustment um, right. but that's a whole nother fee application and, and no, you know We've done variances with right. customers, so we understand. All right. Um, okay. Like I said, there's always been a six-foot chain link fence there. There still is on the inside of the wood fence that we put up to kind of block the view so people don't have to see the material sitting in the yard. So that fence has been there, God, how long, 30 years? It's been there a minute. Yeah. I, I think it probably would be a good idea, but we have to go through the proper channels to make right. it happen. Mm -hmm. So are, are you recommending that we, we table this and get all of those those things in order? I mean, if that's the intent, the, we just have to be clear on what the language is in on, on the BDP well, and those commitments. Could we commitments. just um, do the BDP, take care of that, and then he, had, he could file the variance later? If we're committing to something in the BDP that we're implying a variance would allow for... No, I wouldn't want to do that. No, we could put the right terms and... You would have to make the language in the code of the BDP compliant with code. Yeah, uh, could we possibly do that? And then you'd that? request a variance later to go outside of the code. I would kind of like to do that just so we could clear this issue up and then it's his issue with his fencing. Okay, so we would do it according to code. Then you're, they would have to come back and, and work on that. But does that mean his fence now is out of... It, it does mean the fence now. What do you have to compliance? take it down, or is that? I know <laughs> it has some time frame to do that. Maybe we really mean. shouldn't complicate it with that, and maybe just request a tabling to work all of this out, so that we're uh, not. When the original um, um, county uh, person came out, um, it was an older gentleman. I get his uh, information. He left his packet with his zoning pictures and all that. But he said that side fence, every, all that was fine. It was well within the parameters of the county that's that six foot fence on that side mm. so now you're saying it's not so i i don't know what the gentleman told right. you well um, he works for Burrard county he yeah was, i can get his info and get it up but he's actually one that initially came out on the call when the residents were complaining um but yeah that six foot fence is like i said it's been there it's not in you know it's not out in the right away or the easement or anything but um and it's actually, I believe, inside the property line a good bit, too. 
Mr. Znardi? Um, I'm wondering if we oh. just don't address the fence on the uh, north side of the property that's adjacent to the road. Just leave that out of the BDP, okay. not mention it at all. And then um, he can address that as a separate um, a separate action if he wants to come in with a variance. It sounds like he's agreeing to do that and the neighbor would be in agreement. So we just leave that part okay. out of the BDP. That's not going to complicate things more for him. Uh, no, he can. So, okay. so what you're saying is you have a fence today that is meeting the commitment of what you're putting into the BDP. So it may not be necessary to put that commitment into the BDP if you already have that fence. And then we don't have to scrutinize that so carefully. And potentially that could be a solution. Um, but that's up to y'all. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I like that idea. Okay, I, I do have one more thing that I wanted to ask you about what the no, the noise ordinance on Sundays because that was another concern of the um, the community and I want to find out what time you're allowed to start making noise on Sundays. Commissioner, I'm, I'm not sure the specific time, but I'm, um, it may be. I think Sundays is 9 to 5. I think the other days are sunrise to sunset. Okay. Is what I is what I recall, but I'm not 100% on. Okay. Not that I know, I know your business is different, but since we're going to be changing the zoning on this, I, I think it's imperative that we put some guidelines down to protect the neighbors. So, what would be a comfortable time period for you for us to put in for this BD? Usually, if we work Sundays, and it's mainly just been through the storms. Um, we usually try not to come in before about 8 o'clock on Sundays. Um, so we can only do like cruise. hours yeah. from 8 to? Yeah, 8 to 5. 8 um, to 5. Yeah, because usually Sunday is guys coming to get their trucks and leave. Um, you know, they're not, the yard guy's not there, the office staff isn't there. It's just guys coming in, we open the gates up, they get their trucks and they head out okay. the job sites. I would like to go ahead and, and if you wouldn't mind have that inserted, then okay. I'd be more comfortable with this. And that's fine. And I'll make sure there's no, I mean the forklift will run, but that's not really that noisy. But as far as the router stuff like that, okay. they, we will make sure they don't get ran before 8 o'clock. Okay, then is, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with this and we're going to take out the fence right now and we'll have to work on that for you with a variance. Yeah, because I'd like to get somebody out there to actually okay. meet and go over and, you know. And we'll include in this about hours for Sundays, um, no earlier than 8, no later than 5. That's fine. Right. Okay. Now, if I have, just put it on the table, I got crews that work all over the state of Florida. So if I got a crew coming in at 10 o'clock and needs to open the gates, I got to get my truck because, you know, some of my trucks got $100,000 of tools in it. So I can open the gate, bring a truck in there, park it, and leave out after hours. I, don't, I just want to yeah. put that on the table because my, I had a crew down at Fort Myers working for Walmart <coughs> and they came in. You, I'm sure Friday you can go in and out of your business as you need to. Yeah. But so, they're yeah. not, all they do is open the gates, park truck, and leave because you know, they don't want to hang around. Yes, sir. Down. Commissioner Barfield? If I understand this right, there, there's an active code enforcement case against this right now. And so what it, it looks like... Um, you're doing is uh, you're trying to get the zoning changed so you won't be in non-compliance and you won't be in code enforcement. Yes, correct. Well, yeah, I kind of have a problem with that. You know, when you look at if it's already in code enforcement, you, you purposely are using it for the wrong <coughs> reason, and now you want to change it to legitimize it. Um, you know, I, I I just think that needs to be be brought out. I, I, are we well, setting a precedent? One thing, I mean, there, we have two separate parcels that, that didn't need to zoning being used. One was zoned residential, and I don't think anybody even realized it was, you know, it's just kind of an oddity, I think, that that little sliver of land yeah, it's in the middle fronting of US-1 would be residential. So mm -hmm. um, the other one was, was zoned um, BU1. commercial, but it's BU-1, right? And I, I think it was an oversight, you know, that it was... 
Eagle and, University. And it's something that was just brought to my attention is you're the property owner of one of the pieces. The person that is authorized, and, and this BDP would apply to both property owners. Um, the person that's authorized to act on behalf of that other property owner, I am not sure whether or not she's here today. So I don't know if we have a confirmation that the other property owner is making a commitment to the same criteria. Um, yes, so that's Mark yes. Flickinger. I'm on behalf of Mark Flickinger. They're up in Maryland and I'm on behalf. Anything that needs to be done is being done. Through Except for well. that's not what we have in our file. <laughs> so we we hear you, but well, we need we submitted. something. Our, Supposedly we submitted. have a Form A authorizing Jane Panassas on here. here. Oh, right. oh, that's I'm yourself. Well, okay, I'm so one. sorry. Okay, so as good. long as you're her, yes. then you can uh, agree that Mark Flickinger is in agreement with the conditions that you're speaking to today. Yeah. Mr. Thanks Flickinger will need to sign the binding development plan yes. when it's completed. We're aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> Mr. Snarty? How long have you been operating this business? Um, got a license May of 13. Oh. I knew it was a few years. I just wanted it on the record. I don't think that this is anything new on what you three guys. locations, largest fence company in Brevard County. Right. Three years. Donate and, over hundred thousand. And if and if I would just encourage this commission, if we're going to approve it, let's just find a way to approve it. I mean, and I, I'm so glad you must have read my mind about taking the fence out of the BDP. That was the most logical thing to do. So I appreciate that. But yeah, let's just figure this out. How long have you been trying to go through this process? Six months. Yes. Yeah. Been a minute. Since July uh, 2017. Yeah. It's insane. Madam Chair, I do have a question. Yes, there please. is a reference to peak hours in this agreement for truck loading and unloading, and that's when the gates can be open. And so I think we need to define peak hours. It can be a range of hours. It doesn't have to be just 8 to 9. It could be 8 to 10 or something like that. But we wouldn't want it. I don't know if you want it to be 8 to 5 because that could be an interpretation. Just for Sunday? Uh, no, all during the week. It okay. says shall maintain gates in a closed position except during peak <coughs> hours. It's paragraph 3. Okay. And I just don't want us to have any difficulties with what is a peak hour. Well, usually my guys get to start coming in at 6. By at the latest 9 o'clock, they're usually loaded up and out. I would say 10 just to be safe because we got some crew that come in late if they're finishing up a job from the night before and some of them live down at Palm Bay, they're finishing up come in. And then what we'll do is um, we've already ordered the gates and stuff to and gate operators to close the side gates on the north side. So we'll have those closed after the trucks come in and poise and leave out. Because the guys, we actually leave out of the north, uh, the west side of the property. We have access to go out right on US-1. So our guys aren't coming out of River Park and going on US-1, so we've made another bypass to go out on so US-1. So in the morning, your peak hours are 6 to 10? Usually 6 to 10, and then about 3 to 6, you know, for the most part. Can, can we have that definition in the agreement? I think you'd have to define it correct. Mm -hmm. We yeah, can do that. Here, here's to be thing, enforceable, though. yes. If I have a truck come in and, you know, the gate's open and my guy's at lunch and the gate, you know, doesn't get shut back for an hour, I, I don't want, and I completely understand her on, on wanting things nice, and, but as you see, I'm even getting blamed for stuff that's not even mine. Um, so I want to have a little clarification in here of, you know, um, I don't want to be, you know, for getting up against the firing line every time the gates open at 12 o'clock for 30 minutes because, you know, we have a truck coming in. The, you know, my yard guy, we only have one yard guy, sometimes two part-time. I have a disabled veteran that works for me part-time uh, for a few hours a week that does a little bit of loading and stuff and tries to cover the lunch hours when my yard guy's out, but sometimes he hasn't because he has to be at the VA and get medical. I, I think what it's saying is you're going to try to keep it maintained in the closed position. Yes, I, I think it's 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 reasonable to be able to open it up to, okay. to let a truck in and out. I don't I don't think that's okay. binding you on that part of it. So okay. Okay I I I believe I'm I'm more comfortable with it. We'll we'll do the fence. I, I think the operating hours on Sundays are important and I I think you're fine with that too. Okay. 
and um, and, and you have done um, a good job maintaining a good business there, and you've, you've really made that area um, very attractive. So I, I do appreciate all that. So thank you for all you do. And um, commissioners, any more comments? And may I entertain a motion? Remember, there are two items. There's a comp plan amendment and the rezoning request. That's right. You need a separate motion on both items, correct? <coughs> so Yes, please. 6H, may I receive a motion on item 6H? I'll make a motion to approve um, with the BDP removing the fence item and with the inclusion of the Sunday hours from, is it 8 to 5 on Sundays? Yes, ma'am. Is that everything? That was for the signing item. Correct. I think that was for I. Oh. And the H I is skipped? the comp plan. Oh, I skipped. The I BDP is, should just be associated with the zoning item. Okay. So we'll just we'll do I first since I already made the motion. Sure. Okay. I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Item H. Okay, I'll make a motion for the small-scale comprehensive plan amendment. I have a motion. Do I have a second? With the changes, correct, ma'am? With the changes. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you, and thank you for being mindful of the neighbors. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're all the way at uh, board reports, yes? Okay. I don't have any more public comment cards. Okay, um, county manager? No reports. Ms. Um, Bentley? No report. Commissioner Barfield? No report. Commissioner Tobia? Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I recently uh, became in possession of a letter from the Brevard County Farm Bureau as well as the Brevard County Cattle, Cattlemen's Association uh, signed by uh, Mr. Tom Schuler and a Doug Platt. It was uh, addressed uh, to Commissioner Smith and uh, wanted to make sure that everyone else had a copy of uh, this letter, and of course mentioning it uh, at the board meeting because of uh, sunshine and to see it there could be some potential action. So um, if you haven't already received it, you will be receiving a copy uh, from, from my office. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Smith? No report. Commissioner Isnardi? No report. And I also have no report. You guys have a great rest of your evening, and we'll be back here in a couple weeks. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor, and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.